Hello, I'm Joanne Myers, Director of Public Affairs Programs. As many of you know, the Carnegie Council has been a forum for the discussion of ethical issues in international decision making. But to continue to bring these wonderful programs to you, we need your help. Please visit carnegiecouncil.org, click on donate slash join. Thank you for doing so. I had a colleague who uh, watches a lot of Fox News. He and I were having lunch uh, together one day. He was very angry. Did I know, he asked me, that Obama planned to raise my income taxes? Yeah, I'd heard that uh, there was a, a proposal to eliminate the Bush tax cuts on people like you and me and everyone else in this room. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't think that was a bad idea since we needed more revenue. Uh, well, that's not all. And then he went on to list five or six other taxes. And David Patterson, who was then the gover governor of, of our state, had plans of his own. He listed all those. And I told him I, didn't, I hadn't heard about any of that. And he seemed shocked and, and, and even, even more agitated that I hadn't heard about it. And I said, do you know why I, I don't follow that very carefully? I said, because I don't think it matters very much. Uh, he's a very prosperous guy. I'm way more prosperous than I ever dreamed I would be. We each have successful textbooks and other other sources of income that rained down on us uh, that we hadn't anticipated. And I said, is there any chance the legislature is going to do anything that's going to compromise your ability to buy what you need? I said, oh, they wouldn't dare do that, of course. Uh, <laughs> well, then the only thing left to worry about is, are they going to compromise your ability to buy what you want? Uh, I said, yeah. Well. What determines whether you can buy what you want? Well, the kind of things you want when you're at our income level are the kinds of things others like us want. They're in scarce supply. You want a, for this room, you want a, a, an apartment with a view of the park, I guess, or the view of the river or the bridges. Uh, there are only so many of them to go around. You've got to outbid people like yourself to get them. And if they raise taxes on the people you're bidding against and on you, What's the effect on who gets those things? And he was forced to concede, well, I guess there's no effect. Uh, the same things go to the same people as before. And I said, that's why I'm not worried about this. We've got things we need to do. The, the roll, roads are riddled with potholes. The infrastructure is, is decaying all around us. There are sewer systems that are failing in, in most cities. Uh, New York had a big failure uh, just recently. Water systems are failing. Bridges, uh, during the last campaign, N. Rendell had a press conference. Uh, he identified 6,000 bridges in Pennsylvania that were structurally deficient. Uh, the, the motorists who were on that bridge on I-35 that collapsed into the Mississippi, some of them were poor, but others were rich. I propose that we uh, spend a lot of money fixing the infrastructure. That's, as far as we know, the surest way out of the current downturn. The current downturn is problematic because there's not enough spending. That's what always happens in the wake of a financial crisis. Consumers hold back. They're, they have uh, uh, debt to work down. They're afraid they'll lose their job. They're not going to spend. Businesses hold back. Why should they invest? They've already got more capacity than they need to sell uh, what people want to buy. Keynes was an academic. Uh, I wish he hadn't used this example. He said it would be better than to do nothing instead to hire people to dig holes and fill them back up again. And that would be better than doing nothing. But I think that example kind of planted the idea, oh, government stimulus, that's wasted money. <coughs> there are pressing things that need to be done. The American Society for Civil Engineers did a report card on American infrastructure recently. $2.2 trillion they identified of projects that need to be, that need to be undertaken uh, just to, to get caught up with, with deferred maintenance. One of my favorite examples is a stretch of Interstate 80 in Nevada, 10-mile stretch. If you fix it now, according to the State Department of Transportation, it costs you $6 million to fix that road, to, to repave it. If you wait two years, the truck traffic just drives the cracks deeper into the roadbed, the frost heaves the roadbed up. You've got to spend $30 million to fix it. And that estimate takes no account of the fact that if we fix it today, we're hiring unemployed workers who know how to do those jobs. We're, we're using equipment that's sitting idle in the arts. We're, we're using material that's cheaper than it'll ever be in world markets. We're financing the project with money borrowed at 1.7%. There's never been a lower interest rate available to do these jobs. Why shouldn't we do these jobs, I ask? Uh, and the political slogans coming from the right, that would impoverish our grandchildren. 
I, I sent a, a, an email to Joe Biden's chief economist, said have a press conference every week and do another infrastructure project and have cutouts of Mitch McConnell and, and Paul Ryan there. Ask them, how is it, Senator? Hold the mic up to the cardboard, or better still, let them, let them come to, if you invite them. How is it that spending six million now to fix I-80 is gonna be impoverishing our grandchildren if the option is to spend 30 million if we wait two years? That's not gonna impoverish our grandchildren. Any business would leap at the opportunity to fix it now rather than later if it had to be fixed anyway.